Hey everyone, it's Brandon from Tech Kings here with our review of the Microsoft Surface running Windows RT. The Surface is Microsoft's first tablet developed in-house, and it's packed with much of the hardware that consumers have come to expect from a premium tablet. Being that this is the first big step into the computing hardware space for the folks at Redmond, one can't help but be impressed by the end result. No matter which tablet camp you belong to before, it's undeniable that the build of the Surface looks and feels rock solid. The front of the device is covered in second-gen Gorilla Glass, while the rest of the chassis is comprised of magnesium alloy. Microsoft uses a special process that they call Vapor Mag to produce a thin, light, and aesthetically pleasing shell that is also very durable. The finish is supposedly fingerprint resistant, but it didn't take long before the back of the tablet started to show some smears. Taking a look around the device, we see a magnetic charging port, full-size USB, and micro HDMI out on the right-hand side, as well as one of two stereo speakers. Moving to the left, we see the other speaker, a 3.5mm headphone jack, volume rocker, and a notch for deploying the kickstand. Dual microphones reside at the top of the device on either side of the rear 720p camera, and there's a sleep-wake button. A micro SD card slot with support for high capacity cards is hidden underneath the kickstand. More magnets and a row of pins provide an attachment point at the bottom of the tablet for the optional touch and type covers. All of the ports are open without any flimsy rubber or plastic covers, which is just the way we like it. The front of the tablet is dominated by the 10.6 inch 1366 by 768 clear type HD display which is flanked by another 720p camera and the Windows button. The chiseled industrial appearance of the Surface makes it look like it might be uncomfortable to hold, but it really is quite a joy to use. At 1.5 pounds, it is a tad heavier than some of its close competitors, and the 16 by 9 aspect ratio makes the portrait orientation a bit awkward. However, the design of the Surface makes it far more flexible than anything else on the market that I've handled. You can use it walking around, flat on a table, propped up on a table, laying in bed. You can even use the Surface on your lap quite comfortably, provided that your legs aren't sloping too much. There really is no right or wrong way to use it. Turning on the Surface for the first time is going to be a real shocker for anyone who hasn't seen Windows 8 in action until now. The collection of live tiles on the home screen is very bright and attractive, but the user interface is so heavily reliant on gestures that those unfamiliar will become lost and frustrated in a hurry. The gestures aren't all that difficult to memorize, though, and the most important options can be accessed from the edges of the screen. A swipe from the right brings up what Microsoft calls the Charms Bar. This is where you can access general settings, view a list of connected devices, get back to the start screen, execute a search, or share content from within the current app, provided that the function is supported. A swipe from the right switches to the last use application. Lingering on the outer thirds of the screen lets you snap two applications side by side, a feature that is well tailored to instant messaging or keeping your music controls close by. If you want a little more control over your multitasking, a quick snap back to the right edge will list the most recent six applications, and it gives you another means of accessing the start menu. The bottom edge of the screen houses a contextual menu that adapts to the app that you're currently using. Examples include music controls for Slacker Radio and the address bar for Internet Explorer. Last but not least, if you want to close an application, just drag your finger across the screen from top to bottom for a sort of dunking effect. It took me a while to figure out how to select objects in Windows 8. Rather than activating a selection mode somewhere and then tapping what you want to select, just brush the icon with your finger to highlight it. You'll end up using this a lot when it comes time to organize your live tiles into name groups on the start screen. The design language of Microsoft's modern UI, formerly known as Metro, is beautiful to look at, especially on apps that utilize its full potential. Probably the best example of this is the free Twitter client, TweetRow. It uses a side-scrolling column layout to view your primary feeds and lists, and even utilizes the synaptic zoom feature 
to give a beautiful overview of your different zones. There is also a dedicated photo section. I really enjoy the app's integrated browser for taking a quick peek at links without having to dive into Internet Explorer. Sadly, very few apps in the Microsoft Store come close to this level of polish. Even some big names like Slacker Radio and Evernote seem hastily put together with limited options and awkward navigation. This will hopefully change in the months to come as Windows 8 adoption increases and developers start to take the platform a little more seriously. Despite the fact that the Surface comes equipped with dual HD cameras, the overall photographic experience on the device is rather disappointing. The camera has very few options, and most of our pictures turned out pretty grainy. Pics taken in low light were awful. That being said, walking around and taking pictures with a tablet is a practice that's generally thought of as silly, so this is hardly a deal breaker for us. The front-facing camera is great for Skype calls, an activity that is much more fitting for a tablet. Easy listening is actually quite nice on the Surface, thanks to the stereo speakers that are thoughtfully placed so that your hands aren't going to cover them up. They certainly won't carry a house party, but the speakers are well suited for watching movies and listening to internet radio. There has been a lot of talk surrounding Windows RT and its desktop mode, as it is one of the more confusing aspects of purchasing a Windows 8 tablet. The Windows RT desktop looks an awful lot like the Windows 7 that we're all accustomed to, but there is no support for legacy applications. In other words, you're stuck with what comes preloaded on the machine, which is a desktop version of Internet Explorer 10 and the 2013 suite of Microsoft Office applications along with Windows staples like Paint, Command Prompt, the Control Panel, and others. The desktop version of IE10 isn't anything special, and I found myself using the touch-friendly version a lot more often. Contrary to some early reviews, the performance of the Surface under the added burden of Office 2013 is downright impressive. Even with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, a handful of other apps open, and an internet radio station playing in the background, the Surface didn't miss a beat. Unless I was spamming random characters on the keyboard, my sentences were rendered in a timely manner. Only after I inserted a picture into my document and began manipulating it with my fingers did things start to get a bit disjointed. Microsoft has revised the ribbon controls in Windows Explorer and the Office applications to make them a little more touch-friendly. However, poking and prodding your way through a document or spreadsheet is still a major chore. If you're really serious about getting stuff done on the go, you're going to need to invest in one of Microsoft's two optional keyboard covers that they designed specifically for the Surface. You could say that these keyboard covers are the tablet's secret weapon. Without them, the Surface is just another slate, something to goof around with. The keyboard covers are what really differentiate it from anything else on the market and appeal to those looking to use the Surface as a laptop replacement. You'll be glad to know that both feature a layout that is nearly full size, but you'd be wise to handle the two choices of keyboards for yourself before you make a final decision. While the touch cover may be the ultra sleek, ultra modern accessory that everybody's talking about, it's not much good outside of casual writing. The pressure-sensitive nature of the touch cover requires that you actually strike the keys rather than simply tap them. This makes exercises like holding down shift to capitalize a bit unwieldy. For a more traditional experience with superior tactile feedback, you'll need to spend the extra $10 for the type cover, and it's certainly worth it. I found myself making far fewer mistakes with the type cover than with the touch cover. And this can largely be attributed to the mechanical travel of the keys. Strangely enough, I felt that the touch cover had a superior trackpad compared to the type cover, so it really comes down to what is most important to you. The full-size USB port is always there if you decide to bring a standard mouse along for the ride. 
Another difference to note about the two keyboards is how they feel when you fold them behind the tablet. The touch cover is going to feel like any other cover, but with the type cover equipped, you'll be squishing rows of keys underneath your fingers, which could be a little annoying for some people. Now we've arrived at the big question. Has Microsoft succeeded in creating a hybrid device that can strike a balance between the sleek portability of a tablet and the power of a laptop? From a hardware standpoint, yes. No matter where you find yourself with the Surface, there's always a comfortable way to use it, and the ability to stand it upright on a table is a much bigger convenience than you might initially think. Putting pixel density aside, the tablet's display shows off Microsoft's modern UI and all of its text-heavy glory, and the viewing angles are superb. I was extremely impressed by the responsiveness and accuracy of the touch panel. Given that the OS is so gesture-dependent, I'm thankful that all of my inputs were met with buttery smoothness. The stereo speakers sound good and project all the sound you'd need for some easy listening. The cameras might fall short when taking photos, but video chat performance on the Surface is very enjoyable, especially when you can take advantage of the camera's wide viewing angles. The practicality offered by a full-size USB port is very welcome in a modern tablet, and having access to high-capacity microSD storage allows buyers of the 32GB version of the Surface a little more breathing room for media storage. The optional but highly recommended keyboard covers add another facet to the Surface. They're there when you need them, and get out of the way when you don't. They're more of a natural extension of the device rather than an extra accessory to lug around. But personal preference will weigh heavily on which one you choose, so get to a store if you can to try them for yourself. Of course, not everything is rosy for the Microsoft Surface. Remember that I said that Microsoft nailed the hardware side of this device. As beautiful and innovative as Windows RT is, it has a lot of catching up to do in many areas that most tablet users would find elementary. For instance, why can't I access notifications from the lock screen? And why can't I close groups of apps from the multitasking pane? The list goes on. There's a sizable number of small annoyances that really spoil the overall experience. If Microsoft wants to hang on to the loyalty of early adopters, they're going to need to listen closely to customer input and push out some speedy updates. Only then will they keep Windows RT toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Android 4.2 and iOS 6 through the holiday season. And let's not forget the question that's on everybody's minds, which is, when can we expect more apps in the Microsoft Store? I wasn't expecting much on the day of October 26th, but the absence of many staples like Facebook, Dropbox, and Pandora is painfully apparent even weeks after the launch of the Surface. We all know that the solution to the shortage of content can be summed up in one word. Developers, 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 developers. Until they can really get that ball rolling, Microsoft will have a hard time convincing first-time buyers to choose its device over the competition let alone trying to convert the Apple and Android faithful. But I'm confident that this is one mobile device from Microsoft that won't fall by the wayside. And that concludes our review. There's still a ton of fine points about this device and the software that I haven't covered in this video. So please leave your question in the comments below or hit us up on Twitter and Facebook if there's something specific that you would like us to investigate. Again, this is Brandon from TechKings.net, where we show you how to rule your technology. Take care, everybody, and thanks for watching.